a video response to Pete Coward's Spiral Staircase video. One thing that I really do agree with in the video is where Pete says that he sees a lot of players that just turn around uh, without any shoulder, shoulder angle at all. And, and that it, he says that it creates no power at all. Well, that is absolutely correct. But the problem there is that this method he sees a lot of players implementing is um, a method that's been very much taught um, over the years and it was a method that was very much taught to him when he was playing tournaments on tour by the professional who was teaching at that particular time all, all the players on tour he was born in the um, in the clubhouse where um, Pete was a uh, club professional and and he, um, that was a method that he taught and he discovered for himself obviously that it just doesn't create any power at all, you're just flailing yourself around and you do need a shoulder angle to be able to create some power because that shoulder angle wants to be at an angle of 45 degrees um, as you, the shoulder angle as you look from behind it wants to be at an angle of about 45 degrees if it's more you're twisting your spine, if it's less you're just um, straining your spine, compressing your spine by, um, um, by tilting really. So, but the thing is you don't need to actively move up and around with the shoulders. Um, the idea of moving up and around with the shoulders, um, the first player that I know of, the first golf teacher that I know of that um, came up with that idea was um, a player called Terry um, Terry West Terry Westbrook, who um, taught um, David Ledbetter. Terry Westbrook played on the t on the tour between about 63 to 73, and he had a few fingers missing on one of his hands, and that was the method that he taught. He actually taught David Ledbetter. So. Um, but really it's something that you don't actively really need to think of moving up or around it. The natural momentum of the abs obviously will get the shoulders moving up. And the, and the shoulder angle, Pete doesn't talk about the shul shoulder angle that you should need, but it is 45 degrees and you'll see it's address. When we address the ball, just take, this is why a lot of it should happen so naturally. When we, when we address the ball, that, that elbow there is pointing at an angle of about 45 degrees so all we really need to do is just simply allow that allow ourselves to swing back and that, allow the right elbow to move back in that direction and that will take the shoulders obviously the shoulders will start to move up and it, help, will, it will help to create the shoulder angle of about 45 degrees because by moving back in the direction of that elbow points, the right elbow will be the point of origin of the um, of the shoulder angle. Also, the actual arc of the wrist help because the right wrist arcs back about 45 degrees. Quite naturally, when we get the hands working through this grip secret of applying pressure in the joint of the left wrist, and so the actual arc of the wrist will also help us to um, swing onto that onto the angle. So there's no real need at all to um, to to really worry about the um, the, um, um, the shoulders, the way the shoulders work. And also, of course, when this elbow we move back in the direction that this elbow points as a dress, we eventually cause the upper part of the right arm to hub against the body, and that will help to pull the shoulders around as as everything moves up. Also. In the downswing, Pete talks about holding the um, the right leg in its position and um, and um, creating this downward compression with the left side. Well, really, it's very much an, an impractical theory to, to try and hold the right leg in its position um, because what will happen is in the backswing, as we apply if we apply pressure on the ground with the right foot in the second half of the backswing as we should well then that will increase the um, angle of the right leg and use that increased angle to help us to drive through so of course as we start the downswing that angle is going to increase and it will cause the, um, the left leg to, to drive forwards um, passively um, 
and it may cause some downward compression on the left side because, because, because of the angle that's being created. So really there's no, there's no need to, to worry too much about things. So it's just creating that extra angle there and you'll see that there, from there, everything, that the angle just, just increases with, the, with my right leg. So, and that also may create the downward compression on the left side. So really, um, the swing is much more, na much more natural than um, the Pete describes it as. And it's not so much as um, creating a movement and imagine, imagining various aspects of the swing. We really we need to get the swing going all one motion really, in the, certainly in the back swing. And, and it's just really, in the downswing, it's just about maintaining that control, that's all, that's, that's all we need to do.